Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, this is the Promotory channel. I'm assembling the 8S-180 gearbox and decided to record a video. Operating principle of the demultiplier, I'll explain and tell you everything in my own words. I don't know, maybe someone will find it interesting. So the demultiplier, here's what it looks like. It's this kind of mechanism. I've temporarily fastened it here. The flange isn't original, it's just there so it doesn't fall apart on me. And I haven't installed E, the retainers on the hub yet, so I can switch it without any effort. So the demultiplier, this is what it looks like. This is the mechanism. The gearbox is eight speed, but in fact, we only have four physical gears. First, second, third, and fourth. So physically, there are only four gears. Or there's reverse. But each gear here, with the help of this demultiplexer, turns each gear into two gears. So, some people call it a splitter, a splitter. Well, I call it a splitter, but technically that's not correct. Basically, in this gearbox, the one that S180, basically, it doesn't have a splitter. It only has a range splitter. The splitter is in the gearbox that has 16 speeds, 16. It also has four gears, physically, four gear wheels, but here in the front, on the input shaft, there is a real splitter, the actual splitter. So it gives you these eight gears that are in this gearbox, meaning four physical gears. And plus there's also a range splitter. The splitter divides these gears in half again. Thanks to these different gears, meaning one gear is bigger and one is smaller. As I said, in this 8S180, basically, there is no splitter, just a demultiplier. So, this is our secondary shaft, which goes directly into the splitter. It goes in here, into this central gear of the planetary gear. This is the sun gear, so it goes into it. So how does it work? It is engaged with the help of clutch that moves it either this way or that way. Basically, it turns it on and off right now. It's in the on position. This part with these protrusions is held in the housing, in the box housing. So it's fixed in place. This part doesn't rotate. It becomes part of the box housing thanks to these protrusions. Many are here because the force is strong. A fork here either turns it on or off. This type of air piston turns it on and off. So it's this kind of piston, this kind of cylinder. And depending on whether air is supplied at the right moment, either through this hole or on the body, there's another hole on the cover. Actually, here is the piston. Through this shaft, it either engages or disengages it. Right now, it is in the engaged position. Here, I marked it, made a mark, and put it there, an arrow. Yes, now let's look. The rotation is being transmitted from the driven shaft. Yes, there, we see it. One secondary shaft revolution has occurred. The flange has only turned about one third well approximately one third. Next. Second turn of the secondary shaft. The flange has rotated two thirds. All right, third turn of the secondary shaft. We can see that we still have, the flange hasn't reached yet. Well, for it to reach the end, to the place where it was before. That is somewhere around here we have Half a turn, yeah, it hasn't made about half a turn. Half a turn is about like this. Well, three quarters. Yeah, so roughly speaking, let's say three and a half turns. The primary shaft turns three and a half times while the flange turns once. Now for the marks to line up again, we need to make three and a half turns. All right, let's go. One, two, three, and another half. There you see. Everything is back in place. Basically, what we have here is a reduction gearbox. So, when the demultiplier is engaged, these gears... This is our first gear, the chain, this is our second, and the kitchen. This is our third gear, and the input shaft is our fourth gear. While 
that the multiplier is engaged, then we turn it off. There's no neutral position here because the piston moves either up or down, either up or down, depending on where the air is supplied through which port. Now we've turned it off and now the clutch has moved to the opposite side. That means the, the splitter is off now. Oh, I can't jump. That means the splitter is off now. Well, we're trying to turn this same gear. This comes from the secondary shaft. The torque comes here and we're trying to turn it. But since there isn't. So we can see that it's not working right now. We can see that our marks with the arrow are moving at the same. That is right now one revolution of the secondary shaft equals one revolution of the flange. So it turns out to be a direct drive, like on a simple gearbox, for example, the 6S-90, which goes without a demultiplier, like extending the solid shaft further. Let's try turning it back on now. I turned it on again. And again, let's see what's happening. It's much easier for me to turn it on now. Well, we can see that here we have it's spinning quick and the flange is spinning slowly to be continued. You can see the marks are aligned. The mark on the secondary shaft is aligned with the mark on the flange and vice versa. Two turns, three turns. Still hasn't reached. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly three and a half has a gear ratio of three point. That is essentially in this gearbox. Turns out there is no first, second, third or fourth gear. There aren't any. There are some here, 5th through 8th, E working through a gearbox, working through this gearbox, and as a result, we get the 5th gear working through the gearbox, we get as the 1st gear, the 6th through the gearbox, we get as the 2nd, the 7th through the gearbox, we get as the 3rd, and the 8th through the gearbox, we get as the 4th.